And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, buddy! It's time! Yes, it's time! Yes, buddy, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to aimlessly meander our way into the final part of our cavalcade of laughs. And it is said final part, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all-new extra strength, non-GMO, non-fat, non-sugar, but high in both vitamin B and semen, movie of the week! And this week, it's a me, Gen X, who are all going gaga over the member berries emanating from the 2023 animated film, the Super Mario Brothers movie! Yes. Now, before we continue discussing this uh, movie, I think it's time for us to bring out Spoiler Boy. Oh, Spoiler Boy! Hello. Okay, so, spoiler alert for the Super Mario Bros. movie 2023. Um, if you You're doing great, spoiler boy. If you haven't watched the movie yet, then and you and you don't mind spoilers, then continue watching. But if you don't, you might want to um, stop watching and go. You might stop. Might want to stop watching this and go watch the Super Mario Bros. Movie. Spoiler alert: Luigi dies. Spoiler alert. I don't. I can't say if that's true. Spoiler alert! At the end of the Super Mario Brothers movie, Luigi dies of cancer. I'm. I'm. I'm still laughing over the concept of people having to stop watching us. <laughs> yeah, stop and then, watching us. And then, <laughs> and then, and then, once you're done, come back here. See you. Thank you, spoiler boy. Uh, Bunny, before we dive deep into this film and why it's such a big hit, I have a pitch for a sequel. This is brilliant. This is brilliant. This is wonderful. And it's sure to appease all of the hardcore American fans of the Mario series. Are you ready, Bunny? Yes. So, the original Super Mario Brothers game came out in 1985, and it was such a hit that in Japan, they quickly released a sequel using the exact same game format. They didn't change the backgrounds. They didn't change the characters. It was all the same. It was called Super Mario Brothers 2. However, what the game really was, was basically they remade the first game but the, with the difficulty raised up way high, like ridiculously high. The concept of the sequel being, okay, so you played the first Super Mario Brothers game, and it keeps getting harder and harder until you get to the end, and then you beat the game. So um, in Japan, they had a, a concept that I think is awesome in theory, which is, Let's make Super Mario Brothers 2 just as hard as the end of the first game. Uh Uh-huh. Do you you understand that? So so Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan starts off with just Mario again in the Mushroom Kingdom, but now it's super hard and it sucks ass. Okay. It is so hard, and you're playing the game, and you're like, oh, this is a bit difficult, and it's uh, the characters are faster, and they're all coming out at me, but uh, okay, no, I think I've got this, and you're breaking blocks, woohoo, and you see a mushroom, and it's green, and you eat it, and you immediately die, because in the sequel, some of the power-ups kill you. Okay. Super Mario Bros. 2 was hard as hell. It starts off with the difficulty of the last level of the first Super Mario Brothers, making it a 100% continuation, kind of like Rocky and Rocky 2. 
Now, I know I played it, but I just have no recollection. Ah, 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 no, no. Uh, hold on. Just one moment. You might not have played Super Mario Brothers 2. Because Super Mario Brothers 2 and Super Mario Brothers 2 are two completely different games. So in Japan, they released Super Mario Brothers 2. It's hard as hell. But Nintendo basically said, okay... This game is way too hard for dumb, stupid Americans. Dumb, stupid Americans are not going to want the Japanese Super Mario Brothers 2. We need to give them something different. And so the Japanese people were like, oh, but we worked really hard on Super Mario Brothers 2. We can't make two Super Mario Brothers 2. So uh, Nintendo did something absolutely crazy. One of those things where it's like, that's that's insane. But it's so crazy that it just might work. So what they did was a Nintendo got a Japanese video game that would never get released in America entitled Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic and got the four main characters of the game, the four playable characters, Imogene, Mama, Lena, and Papa, and replaced them with Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. And so they released in Japan an actual sequel to Super Mario Brothers called Super Mario Brothers 2. But in America, they took the Japanese game Yumi Kojo Doki Doki Panic and retrofitted it as Super Mario Brothers 2. So Japan got the actual sequel. We got some other fucking game that they just decided to call a Mario game and release to America. It is weird as hell. I, 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 I j I'm just finding myself not having any memory of Mario Brothers 2, although I know I played it. Mario Brothers 2, you're pulling radishes from the ground and throwing it at small red guys wearing Jason hockey masks. There are magic carpets. Okay. There are... It is bizarre. The first bad guy that you run into in Super Mario Brothers 2 is a trans character. And uh, I'm hoping if they make a sequel, the trans character comes out. Okay, so that is the story of Super Mario Brothers 2, the game. There's two different Super Mario Brothers 2. There's one that is really hard, and then there's so one... So would that be Super Mario 2 squared? No, eventually they released Super Mario Brothers 2 in America in a package game as Super Mario Brothers the Lost Levels. So that's what that Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan in America is called Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels. Super Mario Brothers 2 is a fun game and it's really nice and it's easy to play and in reality it has nothing to do with Mario. Yeah. There's Super Mario Brothers 2 Jap Japan Super Mario Brothers 2 America, and then Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels. Which is the American release of Super Mario Brothers 2 Japan. It's crazy. So anyway, Bunny, this week's movie is Super Mario Brothers. It has made over a billion dollars in about a month, and so of course they're going to be working on a sequel. Here is my perfect 100% perfect pitch! For Super Mario, the Super Mario Brothers movie too. Funny. Do you remember when we did uh, the Loop On movie? Yeah. The nineteen seventy nine anime film, The Castle of Cagliostro, starring Loop On the Third. Yes. Release that in America as Super Mario Brothers 2, the movie. Nice. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit different. 
Mario uh, really wants to fuck every woman he sees and has a gun and is constantly smoking now. And he's gotten a lot taller and thinner. Taller and thinner, yeah. He's been he's been taking uh, Weight Watchers. And then uh, Mario's brother, Luigi, he's a smoker now, and you never see his face because he's always wearing a hat. Yeah. But he is incredible at a gun. He can shoot anything. He, he is the world's greatest trick shot. That is, of course, what Luigi is known for. Now, um, Toad is now a samurai with a sword that can cut through anything. And yeah. then, here's the only controversial part of the Super Mario Brothers movie, too. Peach shows titties and uses sex to get what she wants. Yes. And will be a bit controversial, but, um, hey, Hollywood, you know how there's a writer strike? I already have Super Mario Brothers 2 lined up for you. Oh, and uh, Zenigata's Diddy Kong. Boom! There's your sequel uh, for the Super Mario Brothers movie. Boom! If this is you. You just uh, uh, what's up, Tiger Lily? It. Yes. Boom! They're Super Mario Brothers. I'm on board for this. I think that's a legitimately hilarious idea. So, okay, the Super Mario Brothers movie. It has quickly become the highest grossing animated film of all time, beating the former record holder, Fritz the Cat. Um, now, Bonnie, you expressed a desire to watch this film because it's making so much money, you wanted to know what's the big deal. So, Bunford Williamsburg, you have the floor. What did you think? It was entertaining. It was no big deal, though. It's entertaining. I enjoyed it. Uh, probably won't watch it again, but if I do, I won't mind again. But the biggest problem was how Stormy Daniels fucked this movie up for me. How she completely yes, fucked yes. this movie up for me. Because, Would you look, like the, there he is. Movie? He's even on the poster. Yeah. Stormy Daniels said, Toad is what Trump's penis looks like. Yeah. Um, so for me, it wound up being Trump's penis, the movie. Maxwell, will you do me a favor and leave the room for a moment? Okay. Thank you. And I love you. Okay. The best thing about the E. Jean Carroll um, court case that people aren't talking about is the fact that he was charged with sexual battery, sexual yes. assault. He wasn't charged with rape. The reason being, E. Jean Carroll had something inserted into her, and she wasn't sure if it was a finger or Mr. Trump's penis. Yes. So basically, um, E. Jean Carroll couldn't tell the difference between, uh, just look at your pinky finger. Okay, that's Trump. Yes. And she wasn't sure, like, um, it was either a baby carrot or the president's penis. I, I have been doing my part to try to pass that quote around. It's 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 shocking. I Almost couldn't. as shocking as Bo Jackson smelling a porcupine's asshole. Yes. Which I, is a news bit. That it was in the USA today. I could not tell if he penetrated me or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's your president. Uh, Donald Trump, the opposite of Pete Davidson. Yes. The anti-Pete. There's big dick energy, and then there's small Trump energy. Yes. S-T-E. Now, I'm going to be starting that. But I was here, a child of... There was a village of them. Yeah. 
So I am a child of the 80s. I'm Gen X. I grew up with Super Mario Brothers. I grew up with Nintendo. I remember seeing the Nintendo Entertainment System for the first time. I was at Smitty's. Smitty's was a uh, chain in Arizona where it was a massive, massive supermarket. And also it sold furniture. And also it sold clothes. And also it was a post office. And also it was a bank. And also it was a deli. And also I got my hair cut there. Also there was an eye doctor. Also there was a uh, small arcade. And also there was a sit-down restaurant. Nice. It, and so I went to the electronics section and there were just kids gathering around and they were playing something. What's that? And they were playing the first level of Super Mario Brothers. It is ingrained into my brain. So I grew up with this. And so this movie is basically tailor made for me because I grew up with it and I want to go see it myself. But now I have all of these kids. And I'm paying for them to also go see it, and so it, it and so see it's di it's different for Max though. Max, it, my kids liked the movie, but my kids never really. I grew up with my Mario being Bob Hoskins and Captain uh, Lou. Uh, yeah, that's weird. That is weird. And Chris Pratt now. Now, now you have to and add Chris, Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. So Chris again, Pratt. again, God damn it. Captain Lou Albano, Bob Hodgkins, and Chris Pratt squeezed together under pressure Give Matt Damon. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that weird? So, um, I hated the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, though. Yeah. Absolutely hated that. Because when I heard that they were making a, a, Mar a Super Mario show, I thought, oh, maybe there will be secrets and Easter eggs and things hidden. And maybe it'll tell you how to play the game better. And maybe it'll show all the bosses. And then I go see it, and it's like the Three Stooges. But it's two it's two fat Italians. And it's like, oh, okay. This is not what I had hoped for. But um real talk, I like this movie. It hit all the right buttons for me. There were so many little Easter eggs and references that I absolutely marked out for. Like like the pizza parlor that they are hanging out at is the punch out pizza parlor. Yeah. And you can see there's bald bull. There's uh uh I didn't see Mike Tyson there, but it, that's a different story. Um and then when Mario goes to his room and he's playing video games, first of all, Mario's playing a Nintendo entertainment system. That's weird. Yeah. That's like seeing Jesus read the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, ha! Yeah, I remember that. I was like, hey, this is going to be a supper. It might be our last. Yeah, I totally did that. But he's playing the game Kid Icarus. And it's weird to see a video game character playing a video game, number one. Number two, that game was hard as fuck. That was a really hard game. It sucked. But in his room, he has a pro wrestling poster. And it's my two favorite characters from the original Nintendo game pro wrestling. It's Starman versus the Amazon. And I squealed like a <laughs> little baby in the theater at the fact that Starman from pro wrestling was, was, was on the screen. I was like, ah! And, uh... There's little Easter eggs uh, when you're watching, when they're watching the news, anytime that the news is on, there's all these like, what do they call them? Krylons. There's uh, bits of news that scroll on the bottom. Yeah. And, oh, sure. 
And all of those are little tiny Easter eggs. Like there's one about ice climbers and there's a, a like there's another one about, um, oh, oh, my favorite bit was they said um, there are reports in New York of crabs in the sewer system. And that's a reference to the original Mario Brothers game where the crabs are coming out and you got to hit them, crabs and turtles, and you got to hit them. Um, so, uh, and then they would use, in the movie, they use tiny snippets of video game songs, which I like. Like you're watching the movie yeah. and then they'll play a little bit of this dungeon theme or they'll play a little bit. And I like that. It, it, the movie's cute and it's fun. I do not like Chris Pratt as Mario. However, they did Luigi absolutely fucking perfect, and I love it. I, I felt Charlie the Day forced, the forced sentimentality was w- was just not working with Mario. You know, I mean, like. And and seriously, it should strike home like a motherfucker. Your your father doesn't doesn't your father doesn't approve of you and thinks you're stupid. You know, I mean that should have totally landed, yeah. but it just like felt felt flat, and I I just didn't care much. Yeah, I didn't care much for Mario, but. You know, um, I'm not just saying this because I'm the second born child, but um, I'm just saying I think Luigi was a bit more lovable, a bit funnier, a bit more fleshed out as a character. I like that in the beginning where they're fixing that bathroom, Luigi has like a mirror that he's holding as a shield. And he, he that same scene is mirrored at the end of the film when he's holding like a trash can lid. Or uh, or is it like a sewer manhole cover? But he's using that as a shield from uh, Bowser's yeah. fire. It's a manhole cover. Thank you. But I, I think Luigi is just a better character overall. And I've heard a lot of people say that they're hoping for a uh, Luigi's Mansion movie. But um, we are two grown-ups. Last I checked. And um, we thought that this was an all right movie, fun, cute kids movie, but how we feel about the movie is just the half of it. Oh, kids! Uh, I've got two little ones, a six-year-old and an 11-year-old. They will now be taking over the podcast while I have a bit of an edible. Okay. So, um, uh, spoiler boy, this is your new position in the podcast. Your spoiler boy. The other one is coming soon. Oh, okay. You sit down, Matt. You sit down. And uh, talk about the movie. Talk about what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Go for it. Hi. Hi. Okay. I loved it. Yeah. Like, the kids, like, kids nowadays who haven't played the old games, like I have, and, and Maylin has, um, they wouldn't get most of the references, like when <gasps> Mario saving uh when Mario saving Donkey Kong. Um, they um they get eaten by this eel. I immediately knew that it's the eel from uh, Jolly Roger Bay from Super Mario sixty four. Okay, just cool. So many little references and. So many little references in such big, like, big scenes, and it's amazing. What did you think about the Super Mario Brothers movie? You need to speak a little bit louder. It was good? What did you like about it? Did you like how at the end, God hears Margaret's prayers and finally gives her her period? I think that's the wrong movie. Oh, that's the wrong movie. Okay. Yeah. Even though, about... even though this new movie wasn't made by Sam Raimi, do you think that it it 
stayed true to the Evil Dead franchise, even though there's no uh, there's no uh, Hail to the King baby in it. Oh, that's also the wrong movie. Okay, sorry. No, you can. Yeah, no, you can. How do you think about the little references to the movie? They were kind of bad. They were kind of bad? <laughs> what was bad about them? But one of the characters that I really liked were that little star that really wanted to die. Oh, yes, the star that wanted to die. <laughs> but, 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 yeah. but, Exactly. That's one of the stars from Super Mario Galaxy, which is setting up Aluma. Aluma, yeah, which sets up a bunch of other. Yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah, the only the only way out is <clears throat> the lease of death. What other movies do you think that they can do after this? I don't know. I think. Um. Bowser unshrinks and he gets King Boo and traps Mario in a painting and then Luigi has to um save him teaming up while well, teaming up with Egad Egad which should be voiced by Danny DeVito. Okay. I, I like where you're going here. And get that, and get the vacuum, and get the vacuum thing, and save Mario, and shrink Bowser once again, and maybe flush him down a toilet. I don't know about the end. They, they should make a movie about uh, Luigi's mansion. Luigi's mansion? <laughs> Which is, so me and you agree, um, the sequel. Yes. So that was good, kid. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you guys move and I can... Before I, can... I move... Well, you can, you can stay sitting here for right now. Before I get up, I have to say, Toad has improved from to Mon Mario. Yeah, I was worried about Toad being a character in the movie because everybody does a Toad uh, impression and it's the most annoying thing in the world. That's how Toad sounds. So I like the fact that they got uh, one half of Key and Peel to make a Toad voice that doesn't make me automatically want to rip my hair. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, and also, for real, if someone from Nintendo or Illumination is watching? They all are. Luigi's Family Mansion. Family warning. Okay. Here, you move, and I'm going to wrap up this podcast. Okay. That was nice. Thank you, kids. Thank you, kids. Thank you. Thank you for helping out with the podcast. Wait a second. Human fair, human e fairground wants to offer promotions of our channel. Viewers, followers, views, chats, bots. Wow. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. Fucking okay. okay. Um. Okay. So that was cute. Thank you, kids. Um. But Bonnie, here's the thing. Okay. Hmm. This movie made one billion dollars. Easy. It is the yeah. first movie of 2023 to cross a billion dollars. Do you know what that means, Bunny? No. It means that in the next two to four years, we will be swamped by video game animated movies. Oh, yes. Oh, definitely. And they yes. will... I can't say all of them, but a lot of them are going to be way worse than this week's move. I, I also felt that I need to put this out there before we finish up here. Bowser was way too dark as a character overall. Yeah. 
Yeah. I thought that they did a really he, good he, job he, of Bowser being mean and vicious, but also just has a tiny little schoolboy crush. N- no, he is demanding he is demanding Princess Peach to rape repeatedly over and over again in horrible perverse ways until he gets tired of her or he destroys this the complete civilization. Yeah. That's what? some pretty dark shit. Oh, Eleanor would now like to say her favorite part of the movie. They shrink Bowser and then put him in a little girl. Ah, yes, that was a good part of the movie. <laughs> that was a good part of the movie. Yeah. But every movie studio right now is without a doubt trying to gain rights to video games to make into movies. I can if you pay attention, if if you if you close your eyes and just open your heart, you can see um Timothy Chalamet starring in the Ratchet and Clank movie. I really want to see him starring in Frogger. I, I, I absolutely, I have it written here. I can see the Frogger comedy of like, oh, it's a frog and his family. What? The family gets taken away? I'm going to have to go on an adventure. I'm going to go and he immediately gets run over by a car. End of film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I was really thinking more of watching Timothy Chalamet being run over by cars just over and over and over I mean, and over see. again. Huh? I would see that before I saw Dune again. Yeah. I can see the Banjo Kazooie film. I can see the Frogger comedy. Pete Davidson as Spyro the Dragon. I can see. I can legitimately see the Pac Man movie starring Wanda Sykes as one of the ghosts. Yes. I can 100% see that. Maybe Zelda, Mega Man, I'm not too entirely sure because it's basically, they already did that. It was called Astro Boy. I, I, I would I, really like to see Kevin Spacey as Pac Man. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see Lars Von Tears. I would like to see Lars Von Tears Burger Time. Oh, yes. I would like to see Tommy Wiseau's Dig Dug. It is not time for me to dig under the ground. Oh, hi, bad guy. <laughs> I would like to see that. Um, but the copycats riding on Mario's coattails, calling it now, that's going to suck. Yeah. That is going to suck. But Hollywood, call me. I already have Super Mario Brothers 2 dark in the can. Dark ready for you. Dark days ahead of us. Yeah. Thank you, Mario. Thank, Thank you. you, Mario. Um I, I hated the thing to so- put on my tragedy list. I hated some of the the song choices. Yeah. In the movie, it's obvious they're like, "Hey, we're a kids' film, so we need some pop, some popular songs." And then, like, okay, let's just reach into the hat. Um, Beastie Boys sabotage, whatever. Um, uh, it like it was just really like non sequitur, but it upsets me that the Super Mario Brothers movie features a scene. With Beastie Boys, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. And they use that during the big fight near the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was like, wow. What are the odds? (laughs) I'm worried. I'm worried that I'm going to go see another movie. I'm going to go see uh, Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret Theaters. And she's going to be there like, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. 
Do you know what, what borough I live in, God? No sleep till... That's, that's what I figure is going to happen. Every movie needs to have that. Every movie needs to have one Beastie Boys song, but then in the preview, use one David Bowie song. Yeah. That's just, that's just the law. Uh, so that's it for this week's movie. It's, it's cute. It's fine. I grew up with Nintendo, so I love it. My kids loved it. That's what's important. Next week! Yo. Yo. Yo, Bonnie, are you ready? Are you ready for next episode? Yo, Bonnie, are you ready? Does it start? Yo! You bet it starts. Next week, our next episode is the beginning of summer. And every summer, we do themed summers. We've done the summer of Saw, the summer of Star Wars, where we watched all of the cinematically released Star Wars movies, except for the Clone Wars animated film, because it doesn't count. Uh, the summer of Fred Willard, the summer of bottoming. This year, we're doing the summer of Yo. We are watching the entire Rocky series, and we are counting how many Yo's are in them. Yes. Uh, we're doing the summer of Yo, or as I like to call it, another summer of avoiding the Fast and the Furious franchise. Yes. Hooray! I, I should really figure out how to redo the announcements so that we can keep a running total of the Yo's. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. th those announcements that I put out every week, that really draws in the crowd. Bunny. Um, and they would really like to know how many yo's at each point, I think. Yeah. Um, Bunny, do you want eight dogs? A dog? No, eight. Eight. Okay, just one would be fine. He's got a cat behind him on the couch, so I think that's already a no. Okay. Um, I Less than a minute. Okay. Next week, we're starting our summer reveal where we're watching the entire Rocky franchise. Next week, Bunny, you, I'm going to put you to work. We're watching Rocky 1 and 2. Uh-oh. That's not fair. They're, they're the, they tell the same story. Yeah. Because 2 starts right where 1 leaves off. So we're watching Rocky 1 and 2, and then the next 3 and 4 are such masterpieces that they both need their own episodes. Okay. Period. So um, Rocky 1 and 2 next week. But that's our next episode. Now that I'm looking back at this one, um, Chris Pratt, Cutout Buddies, um, Smelling a Porcupine's Asshole. i got to say, I think this has been a great episode. 